Buenas tardes, soy abogada Solmas Tigavi de Bufeta Tigavi Inmigración. Tenemos dos oficinas, una en Richmond, Virginia, la otra en Phoenix, Arizona. Good afternoon, my name is Solmas Tigavi, I'm an immigration attorney with the law firm Tigavi Immigration Law. We have two offices, one in Richmond, Virginia, and the other one in Phoenix, Arizona. I'm here to talk to you about President-elect Biden's immigration policies and um, some things to take into consideration. And thank you all for tuning in. Buenas, Candy, ¿cómo está? Estamos aquí para hablar sobre el presidente electo Biden. Felicidades. Tenemos um, muchas cambias buenas por nosotros comunidad y nosotros estamos muy feliz para hablar sobre, um, sobre los potenciales um, que la administración de Biden um, dicen que qué pasó en la futuro por inmigración y cómo puede preparar ahora. So in addition to talking about President-elect Biden's immigration policies, I'm also going to give you a couple of tips to prepare. And I'm so excited to be here to talk to you about this. Please comment below with any questions as we go through talking about these things. Be more than happy to answer your questions. If you want to set up a consultation, our phone number is here. Richmond phone number, Phoenix phone number. So give us a call, follow us. All right. Um, so, los números por la oficina de Virginia es aquí y la otra es por Phoenix allá. So, por favor, me llama por un consulta. Um, nosotros estamos muy feliz para ayudarle. ¿Ok? Ok. So, la primera cosa es que si es necesita cooperación de Congreso también por las nuevas leyes de inmigración. Pero si la... Si nosotros no tenemos la co cooperación de Congreso, uh, la Presidente tiene la autoridad para mandar varios órdenes de Presidente para hacer las leyes de inmigración. So, just to say that, of course, it would be great if we could have the cooperation of Congress in order to pass some big immigration laws. However, it's not necessary meaning that the president can pass re rules, regulations, um, the AG can also overturn cases, and most importantly, create executive orders that can accomplish the goals that he wants to accomplish. The Trump administration has passed numerous executive orders, and so it doesn't take much cooperation from Congress for President-elect Biden to overturn those ordinances or those orders. So I'm going to go through, I'm going to start in English um, and describe the different changes that the president-elect Biden team has told us that they're going to make for immigration law. Number one is restore DACA. So ahora yo hablo sobre los cambios um, potencial que la administración de presidente electo Biden dicen que ellos quieren en la primera sin días hacer por los leyes de inmigración. Primera es DACA, para restaurar DACA. Es muy importante y felicidades por todos de sus amigos, sus coworkers que tienen DACA. Esa es muy importante y estamos muy alegres. Um, there's also been talk that not only will he restore DACA, but he will create a path to citizenship for those DACA individuals. And that's something that we're really looking forward to. And our Dreamer kids, you know, they're super people who have come here, um, not by their own will, but as children. And they came, they studied, they learned English, um, and they deserve this. So we're really excited to see not only DACA be restored, but we want to see a path to citizenship for the DACA recipients. Um, la segunda cosa es para quitar los travel bans. Hay 13 países que son musulmanes o de África que Trump um, comenzar un travel ban. So ellos no pueden entrar sin un perdón. Um, Esa para mí es muy importante porque mi familia es de Irán 
y Irán es, es un país que incluye a la travel ban. So, por esos cuatro años, mi familia tiene muchos problemas para um, inmigrante aquí por medio de este travel ban. So, nosotros somos muy felices um, para quitar, para presidente electo Biden, para quitar el travel ban. So the second um, change that the president-elect Biden policy has put out is lifting the travel ban. There are about now 13 countries that are either predominantly Muslim or African countries that the Trump administration has implemented a travel ban. This was way before COVID. Um, this is something near and dear to my heart because I'm Iranian American and Iran has, um, Iranian citizens have um, disproportionately been affected by this travel ban. Um, so we're super excited to get that travel ban lifted so people who are deserving can come and be reunited with their family, um, come live here, work here, and um, we can't wait to see that travel ban being lifted. La tercera cosa es para fresar los deportaciones por sin días. Nosotros pensamos que esa es porque bajo la administración de Trump no hay pre prioridades por las deportaciones. So ellos quieren que deportar todas las personas que ellos pueden buscar. Ahora, bajo la administración de, de Biden, por 100 días, ellos quieren que quitar las deportaciones. Pienso que en, en estas 100 días, um, ellos quieren que, um, que darle prioridades muy similar de administración de Obama que ellos tienen prioridades que las personas que tienen los problemas criminales o historia criminales o tienen um, órdenes de deportación, que estas personas son prioridades. So, um, es, es muy importante porque ICE no tiene dinero o tiempo infinite, infinite, um, inf infinite. So, es muy práctica que ellos tienen prioridades para las deportaciones. So, esas es también muy importante. Um, pero, un cosa es que estamos escu escuchamos que antes de 20 de enero, de cuando el presidente electo Biden comenz um, va a comenzar, um, que antes de este día, tal vez la administración de Trump son muy agresiva con las deportaciones. So, um, vigilar muy, um, ¿cómo se dice? Vigilar su situación um, o me llama que nosotros podamos hablar, pero en estos días de ahora, de, de 20 de enero, es, es muy um, un tiempo sensitivo por los inmigrantes. ¿Ok? So the third thing is that the president-elect Biden would like to freeze deportations for a um, hundred days. It's not clear if it's the first hundred days. We imagine so. We believe it's because he wants to recreate deportation priorities. This is very similar to the Obama administration where they had levels of priorities. So for example, the first level would be people who are threats to our national security are number one, meaning that ICE, um, the police, or the um, people who are imposing the laws, the immigration laws, they're going to prioritize their time and their money for those people who are more dangerous. And um, they're gonna freeze the deportation so they can put out these priorities and ICE can use their time wisely to go after people who are considered um, more dangerous, who have previous orders of deportations or a criminal history that is aggravated. Um, and we want to see that. We want to see ICE to spend their time going after people that um, are not following our rules, who are offending our society. And we don't want other people who happen to be in their home um, or at their workplace to get picked up when those people don't have a criminal history at all. Um, so that's something that we're looking forward to. 
Um, we want ICE to spend their time and money wisely. It's our tax dollars that they're using. So we want to see them go after people who are high priority and not everyone under the sun. So that's something um, that we look forward to. <clears throat> I will say that there's been a lot of talk and also we have seen it happen um, that between now and January when uh, the president elect takes office, that the Trump administration is going to be very aggressive far as deportations go. So we are hearing, even though we're in the middle of a global health pandemic, that the Trump administration from here to January is going to turn up their deportation actions. Um, so be aware, we've had other Facebook videos where I've talked to you about how to prepare yourself if you're ever detained, you know, consult with the attorney, our phone numbers are down here, make sure we have your information, we have your documents, and also that your family has connected with us. So if something happens to you, we can be there to help you. Um, so keep that in mind from here until January, the deportations are going to potentially go up. Um, so just keep your eyes peeled for that. The next item on President-elect Biden's list is ending the public charge rule. So the public charge rule was something above and beyond normal immigration law that required people to show that they, as an immigrant immigrating to our US, will not become a public charge or a burden on our economic society. So they would look at your age, your health, your language skills, employability, um, education, and they want to determine if you migrating to the US um, is, is beneficial for the US. The um, federal courts have said during a global health pandemic, the public charge rule is not constitutional but the Trump administration has still been enforcing the public charge rule. So all of you who um, are clients of mine out there, and we've talked a lot about the public charge rule and the forms and the documents, um, that sounds like something that's gonna come to an end under the Biden, future Biden administration. So that is great news, especially during a global health pandemic. Um, we are all trying to survive um, and so having to prove something more than that, I think is, is, um, is egregious. So we're really excited about that as well. Um, la otra cosa es quitar el cargo público. So yo pienso que ustedes, um, veo mi otro videos sobre esta ley. Es una nueva ley de administración de Trump que dice necesita que va probar que usted no hay un cargo público, um, que usted tiene buen salud, usted puede buscar un trabajo y usted es una persona independ, um, independiente económico. Yo pienso que, um, bueno, los cortes federales dicen que esta carga o esta, um, es, esta regla es no constitucional, medio de una pandémica. Pero la administración de Trump um, no escucha. Ellos enforzar esa regla. Pero pienso en enero que, que pre presidente Biden quitar esa regla. So por mis, mis clientes que sabía sobre esta ley, en la futuro no hay un problema para nosotros. Ok. Uh, la otra cosa es, es muy feo. Se llama MPP. Um, es la programa de las personas en la frontera de sur de Estados Unidos que ellos quieren va a entrar por medio de silo porque ellos sufran persecución. La ley internacional dice que si hay una persona, no solo aquí, pero en todo la, el mundo, cuando una persona venir a la frontera y ellos quieren va a solicitar por asilo en su país, necesita que esta persona entrar su país um, para este proceso. Pero en la administración de Trump, 
es una cosa muy feo. Él dice que no, ustedes no pueden entrar nos, nos, uh, nuestro país por asilo. Necesita que ustedes esperar a México um, y en México las personas que esperar allá no hay organización, no hay una línea formal. Um, ellos viven en campos. Um, hay personas en México que um, va a robar estas personas. Es una cosa bien feo um, de esa administración y espero que es la primera cosa que la nueva presidente quita. Ok, tengo muchos clientes en, en México ahora que ellos sufren en, en los otros países y ahora ellos um, quieren que nosotros ayuda a ellos, pero um, ellos sufren todavía. So, espero que esa es una cosa que cambiar. Nosotros no tenemos mucha información que las personas que son pendientes ahora, qué pasó con estos casos. Um, pero es, es def definitivamente una cosa que el presidente um, Biden cambiar y quitar, ¿ok? Es no humano, no hay una cosa humano y también es ilegal de las leyes internacionales. Um, so, the, the next thing on the list, which is very, very important to me, and I hope it's the first thing that the Biden administration ends, It's the MPP program um, or the Remain in Mexico program. So we have, um, first of all, it's international law that anytime someone comes to your border seeking asylum, that you have to allow them to seek refuge and enter your country and go through a process that is internationally protected for asylees. Um, the Trump administration has changed this program and has made it so the people at our southern border who are seeking asylum have to remain in Mexico. They are living in squalor, they're being robbed, there is no organization, there is no formal line. They live in camps. When they go to court, they go to court in tents um, that are in Mexico. People are getting um, raped, assaulted, COVID. It's It's extremely inhumane, and so we are um, hoping this is the first thing that the Biden administration changes. If you are seeking refuge in our country, per international law, you should be allowed in our country um, to meet, to go and see if you meet the basic requirements um, for asylum with a credible fear interview. So we are so excited to see that change. For the people who are already in this program, in Mexico with pending court dates. Um, I know a few of my clients are um, one of those. We don't know how your pending case will be adjudicated with the end of this program, but definitely stay tuned. Um, we'll keep you updated and let you know how things are going to play out. I know this is very, very important for a lot of families. So um, we're so excited to see um, humanity restored to our immigration policy, especially with the MPP program. All right, um, the next thing is that the Biden administration will raise the refugee cap. It's been at an all time low, I think, under the Trump administration, um, the lowest it's ever been in the history of our nation. Um, but the Biden administration will raise the refugee cap to, I think, 122,000 was the number um, that was put out. Um, and then also they will start a family separation task force. So another ugly, egregious, embarrassing thing that this administration has done as far as immigration policy goes is separating parents and children. And then after a federal court case tells them you have to reunite them, they've lost contact. And There's hundreds of children um, who don't know where their parents are and the U.S. government is responsible for that. So the Biden administration is going to create a task force, to create accountability for this administration, and they're going to make it a priority to get these um, people, these families, these children and parents reunited. Um, another huge 
huge um, restoration of humanity to our immigration um, policies. So we definitely can't wait to see some children reunited with their families. Um, los dos otras cosas es que el número, so hay un número limitado cada año por los ref refugees, refugiados, pienso en español. Um, so ahora es sin 22 millones. Antes Trump administración tiene la número ba bajísimo de todo de historia de los presidentes. Um, la final cosa es que los padres y niños que la gobierno separado, Biden quiere que hacer un task force o una organización a la um, gobierno de Estados Unidos para re, reunir, um, reunir los niños y los padres. Es una cosa que um, es también muy humano, muy importante de, de los policías de inmigración en este país. Ok, mi advisos. So, um, esperamos que la presidente electo, Biden, um, cambias buenas por nosotros comunidad y um, necesitamos que preparar por los cambios y tengo varios advisos que cómo puede prepararse. Ok. Una, prepararse con sus documentos. Por ejemplo, su impuesta, certificado de nacimientos, sus documentos de migración, su número A o su número de extranjero, um, de acta de nacimientos de sus hijos, um, si usted aplicó por um, otros tipos de beneficios antes, por ejemplo, TPS, necesita todas sus tarjetas de TPS o por DACA. Esa es muy importante. La otra cosa, pre prepararse su dinero. Porque DACA, tal vez nosotros tenemos DAPA um, y varias otras cosas, por ejemplo, por TPS. Um, y si usted tiene problemas criminales o documentos falsos o varias entradas que seguro que el gobierno quiere que ustedes va a pagar multas o necesita perdones, um, necesita que contratar con su abogada. So hay varias cosas, um, varias cosas que necesita prepararse no solo sus documentos, pero también su dinero por las multas, tarifas um, de gobierno y, y por su, su abogada también. En um, English, OK, I'm going to give you some advice about how you can prepare from now um, to when things become actualized. And you can prepare with your documents. So start with obtaining your biographic documents like your birth certificate, your children's birth certificates, taxes, um, any kind of immigration documents that you've ever received from the immigration court or CBP. Um, get your passports ready to go if you need to renew your passports. Um, criminal history, if you have a criminal history, make sure you're going and getting a complete um, documentation of your criminal history. Um, translating your documents, necesita que traducir todos sus documentos que no son en inglés. Nosotros podamos ayuda con eso. Um, if your documents are in a different language, start to get them translated. We can help you with that. Um, not only your documents, but your money. So if you have criminal history, multiple entries, ever use false documents, Um, there's going to be, you know, DACA is going to be back on the table. We might even see DAPA, um, parental accountability that was also introduced under the Obama administration. Um, there's just multiple things that will come up and the government is going to have waivers that have filing fees. 
anything, USCIS is a fee-based um, organization. So you're gonna have to, you're gonna have government filing fees, especially if you have any kind of record, you need to apply for a waiver. They there will be filing fees. So um, save your money for your filing fees, to pay your attorney, to consult with an attorney, um, and prepare your documents. So those are the, the two big things that you can start with right now. Um, what else? We are in the middle of a global health pandemic. So start to get yourself digital. Um, if you don't own an email, go ahead and open an email. There's plenty of email um, domains like Gmail, Yahoo, that you can start one for free. You can go on YouTube, learn how to use Gmail. It's a great way because we can't always have people coming into our office, um, especially with last minute things. With coronavirus, you want to become digitalized. So make sure you start your email. Um, so when you go talk to your lawyer, we can get your email from you and we can start that process um, without exchanging hands um, and, and potentially getting each other sick as the COVID numbers cases rise in these days. So, um, por medio de pandemica es necesita que somos totalmente digital. So, si usted no tiene un correo electrónico, es muy importante um, porque los números de COVID cada día son muy alto ahora en estos días. So, si usted no tiene un correo electrónico, es gratis on Gmail, Yahoo. So, va a buscar on YouTube. Um, on YouTube, on español también, hay casi programas que usted puede um, ver que es como un tutorial, cómo usar la Gmail o correo electrónico. So, cuando usted tiene una consulta con su abogada, usted tiene su correo electrónico y nosotros podamos hablar y pasar la información y documentos sin mano de mano por medio de pandémica es muy importante, ¿ok? ¿Qué más? Sigue nosotros en Facebook, en Instagram, en TikTok. Somos, um, somos aquí para ustedes. Um, tenemos Facebook vivo cada semana más o menos con la nueva información. Ahora es un importante momento por la democracia en este país, pero también por inmigración. Pienso que hay muchas cosas um, nuevas. So, Vijalar sigue el página de nosotros um, porque yo quiero que ayuda um, con este proceso y para, ¿cómo se dice? Educar. Educate. Educate yourself. Um, yo quiero darle la información, so ustedes tienen la poder, poder para, um, para vivir un, un mejor vida aquí en este país. Um, la otra cosa es que ahora es un momento um, sensitiva por fraude, inmigración fraude, so es siempre mejor que usted consultar con un abogado o abogada. Los notarios no son abogados en este país. Um, en sus países, en Centroamérica, eh, hay la palabra de notario, pero aquí es, es muy diferente. So, es en su beneficio, es su vida, es su futuro, que usted consultar, um, va a consultar con una abogada. Todos los abogados en este país tienen una licencia, un número de licencia, y usted puede buscar en la internet para verificar. O um, una persona, una abogada que usted tiene um, la recomendación de las otras personas en su comunidad, eso también ayuda. Um, ustedes tienen muchos derechos con sus abogados, So, si usted no son contenta con su abogado, um, si ellos no regresar su llamada, es, es un problema. So, 
Um, ahora es un buen tiempo para consultar, para buscar quién es la persona que va a representar su vida, su futuro. Es muy importante, su familia. ¿Ok? Um, so, in English, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. We'll have our new website up that I'm going to um, post to you. Follow us because this is a super important time, not just for democracy, but for immigrants. Um, we are going to see a lot of great change coming through, and we want you to take advantage of it and not miss the opportunity. So make sure you call or follow us on Facebook, Instagram. Um, it's super important. And we're going to be here weekly telling you what's going on. So follow us and don't miss the opportunity. Um, share our page with your friends and family. Right now is also a very sensitive time for fraud, for immigration fraud. Um, so in a lot of Central American countries, um, a notario or a notary is considered someone with a legal background. But as you know, in this country, a notary is something extremely different, has um, nothing to do with a legal background. So every lawyer has um, a license number. So if I'm barred in Virginia, I have a Virginia license number. You can ask them, where are you barred? What's your license number? And you can go look up their name or their license number online to verify that they're an attorney in good standing. You can go on Google, read reviews, um, Make sure that you know you have rights when you hire an, a lawyer. If they're not calling you back, if they're not giving you updates, if you can't speak to your lawyer, that is a problem. Um, so make sure you're using this time to find out who you want to work with, who do you want to put your future um, and your family's future in their hands and speak to other people who have had positive outcomes with other attorneys. Um, listen to the people in your community and pick someone who's right for you because this is extremely important um, and time sensitive. So you don't want to miss out and you don't want to be stuck with an attorney that um, that is not helping you, but that's hurting you. Uh, so it should be a great experience between you and your attorney. All right. So be very vigilant for fraud. Make sure you're working with someone who's accredited um, that the prices are fair and um, that that they are in good standing. The other thing is don't listen to the people around you. So we have a lot of clients that say, you know, my cousin did this and now they have work authorization. Immigration law is very, very, very uh, detailed and specific. It's not meant for every attorney. It's usually someone who specializes in the field, who does it every day, who knows all the changes because boy, are there daily changes. Um, so don't listen to your cousin or your uncle. Go talk to a lawyer that you trust and that you have confidence in, that you verified is a good standing lawyer and listen to their specific advice for your specific situation. Um, every case is different and one little fact like the country that you're from can change the advice completely. So make sure you get your community out of your head and that you speak to someone who can advise you and that you trust. Um, don't be brainwashed about what other people are telling you to be afraid about, hear it from, you know, the source and um, it, it will change your life. Ok, so la final, advicios es que no escuchan de otra personas en su comunidad o su familia, su tía, su primo. Inmigración es una special, especialidad, es una cosa muy difícil, no todos los abogados tienen la información um, para hacer los, um, las Casa, los casos de migración. Um, so, es una cosa muy específica, factual. 
So, un detalle que es diferente de su amigo, por ejemplo, um, el país de usted viene, uh, tal vez quizás cambiar todo. So, es muy importante que ustedes no escuchan de las otras personas. Es muy importante que usted tiene una conversación, una consulta con una abogada que usted tiene um, confidencia y um, que puede darle la información específica de su caso, ¿ok? So no escuchan de, de las otras personas, um, escuchan de su abogada, ¿ok? Bueno, nosotros estamos muy alegra, muy contenta con la, la lección y tenemos mucho trabajo para ustedes por la comunidad y espero que nosotros podamos trabajar juntos con mucho gusto. Uh, soy abogada Solma Tegavi de Bufeta Tegavi Inmigración. Tenemos oficinas en Virginia y también en Arizona. So, si ustedes tienen personas en la frontera, uh, nosotros podamos ayudar con la oficina que nosotros tenemos en Arizona. Um, so, por favor, me llama, es la número, sigue de nosotros en Facebook y también Instagram por toda la información importante en estos días. Um, one other time, we are so happy to have the president-elect Biden. We can't wait to have him get started to restore democracy, to um, overturn some of these um, policies that have hindered our community. And um, I hope that you can um, follow this advice and follow us on Facebook. If you know anyone who's facing any issues at our southern border, we can help you from our Arizona office phone number right here. Um, please follow us on Facebook, give us a call, share information. We want to help you. These days are so important and we just can't wait to get started. Um, thank you for following us. Y yeah, we'll be seeing you soon. Gracias.